All right, everyone, Mark M0 JCF. Uh, if you're here, then you know my videos and you know that I'm not into her video production quality and all that old nonsense. Uh, this one is about this, uh, this radio is very, very popular at the moment. It's the uh, Quansheng UV uh, K5. And um, just recently, I got it working on uh, SSB. I've, all, I've got it expanded. It's expanded from uh, 18 megahertz to uh, 1,300 megahertz, 1 1.3 gigs. And it does AM, FM, and SSB. And I was on one of the Facebook groups and uh, saying, look, I've got it working on SSB, surprisingly good for what it is, you know. And, of course, you, you end up with the multitude of questions and uh, then people ask, you know, where'd you get the software? Where'd you get the firmware? Where, you know, where this, where that, where the other? And I'd have thought, you know, if I keep on dancing between all of these comments, then I was getting myself lost, let alone uh, the uh, people asking me the questions. So I said, what I'll do is I'll do a quick video on um, on updating the firmware on this radio, okay? This is about the firmware. This isn't about the software. This isn't about chirp and programming in your favorite repeaters and all that old nonsense this is about the firmware on this radio which changes it from just a two meter um 70 sems transmit capability with i think 220 and 350 uh, megahertz transmit capability and um, a wider receive capability if you've got this radio you know this radio i don't have to go through that um this is this is really answering those questions um what firmware did i use uh, where did I get the firmware? How did I get the firmware on? That's what this video is. Now, I will add a caveat that this is all done by me. Um, well, let's see, what's the uh, expression? Poke and hope, right? Okay, I didn't do this with any sort of methodology. Um, methodology it's um methodology they are, I can't even speak English anymore. It's that uh, there was no real methodology. It was plug it in, press this, press that, press the other, does it work? No. Right, what did I do? Let's try something else. Oh, look, and now it works. That's how I got around this. So the laptop I've got is an old Lenovo. It's Windows 11. Um, I'm not too sure on the uh, the model of this. It's the UVK5, um, but I don't know, you know, which version, etc. It is just the uh, UVK5. I don't know if I can get some more light on that. As I say, I haven't made this or making this with any production uh, quality. But uh, first thing you'll need is you will need, obviously, the programming cable. OK, it's USB to uh, this affair here. You will need one. I've got about half a dozen. Some work, some don't. Some complain about drivers. Some complain, you know, the difference whether you're using Windows 10, Windows 11. And in the end, I decided I'm just going to buy a new one from a fresh. And it's what I did. Now then, I went to eBay. And on eBay, I've got this seller. Now, let's move this camera so you can see this. Okay, there's the seller, G0OYQ-Steve. He is the seller. And if you was to put in that USB cable for programming the Quansheng UVK5, UVK6, Retavis RA79RA-79, that will probably take you straight to him. Uh, £6.98 UK. There ain't a lot of difference in euros and dollars at the moment. US dollars, that is. So... Uh, I I found that this one works, and not only does it work, and I've had absolutely no problems, but it gives you a little piece of paper. Here's another one. I bought two. There's a little piece of paper here, and in the paper, it tells you where to get the correct drivers. It tells you, you know, like a, a few bits of information on a little bit of paper. That's more than you usually get. You order one of these cables, and um, it will turn up in a grey plastic bag, and that's it. You know, and you have to hunt out the drivers. He tells you where to get the drivers, etc. I didn't use the enclosed um, uh, CD-ROM or mini CD-ROM. So there you go. That's the first place. So you've got that. Now, I will put um, all of this in the description of this video. Likewise with the other stuff. Okay. The other place you need to go, if you use social media and you use Facebook, 
Here's a place I recommend. The Quang Sheng UV Dash K5 UK users. Now, primarily when this was set up, I think it was for you know to get away from the many Facebook groups, etc. And this was meant to be UK exclusive, as far as I can tell. The World in His Dog is now a member. And um, it seems to be very well thought out, you know, lots of information. But the important thing about this um, Facebook group is this. While you can go to the various GitHub, etc., and find the software you need, in the files section of this Facebook group is all of the bin files so far that somebody's collected together quite up to date so there's all the bin files there's also a lot of chirp files chirp files specific to areas of the uk i mean you know it goes on and on and on and we can go down anyway eg zuma underscore version 0.16 uh, is that underscore packed dot bin. That is the firmware that I use. So um, luckily, uh, it's come up quite early in the list. And <coughs> um, I, I thought, you know, I went through loads of these uh, firmwares. And, and, you know, some work, some I wasn't too happy with. Some have got quirks and that. But, you know, these people, you know, they're, they're uh, modders that are doing this off their own back and uh, I'm not a programmer. Um, I'm an ex-Unix um, admin. That's as far as um, it goes. I'm not into programming. I'm not into softwares and stuff like that, you know. It doesn't really uh, float my boat. So anyway, so that's where you need to go. That's the Facebook group. And that is where you'll find chirp files, bin files, FAQs, that sort of thing. Okay, Um the third place you want to go is you'll need Chrome, okay? You will need Chrome. Uh, this doesn't work, at least it doesn't work for me. does not work for me on um, on a, a Firefox, etc. It only works for me on Chrome. So go to Chrome, and then this is the website that you want, the UV Mod website. And what I'll do is, can we see that? Um, who's Matt.github.io forward slash uvmod forward slash configurator.html. Uh, I'll put this in um, the uh, in the description, but it's not the page that you want. You don't want the configurator. The place we want to be is Patch Up Flasher. So we'll swap to that. In fact, I could probably post a link. Um, that will be a, a better idea. I'll post a link. So you can see here, uh, you, you've got your a, a basic interface. And the interface, very, very easy to use. If you've got this far, if you've got your cable, and you've got this far, and uh, you, you know, you, you've managed to download your .bin files, uh, the binary files from uh, the Quan Sheng Facebook group or wherever you want to get them, then, um, you know, this point here is, you know, you're 90% of the way there. It's now a few clicks away and you've got your, uh, you've got your radio up and running uh, completely either uh, modified or you've turned it into a brick. But, you know, these radios are so stupidly, ridiculously cheap. I don't know what the gig is there. I don't know if we're all buying these radios and the man somewhere is uh, watching us. But, you know, I'm not into conspiracy theories. So uh, we'll, we'll leave that for the for the other uh, fraternity. Uh, and good luck to them. It's what they want to do. Uh, me, I just want to get a radio up and running. Now then. I uh, say so the modifications, um, okay, I don't know if we can really see this here. Uh, let's see if we can make this a bit better. As I say, I'm not into video production. Um, okay. But, uh, you know, one of the one of the first things that I that I did before I did any SSB modifications that if you just uh, once your radio is connected, if you just spin down here and you can see apps. Okay. And here, for instance, you can change the battery icon. 
you can change the custom boot screen so you know you can have various things showing when the radio first switches on and boots up you can click skip boot screen i think i did that you can change your fonts um you can swap the display round disable frequency copy timeout uh yeah, I, I didn't use a lot of these. Disable transmit completely. That is absolutely fantastic for this radio. If you're not licensed or you've got no interest in uh, transmitting, you want it as a little scanner, as a cheap scanner. Fantastic. Turn off the uh, transmit capability and you won't upset anyone anywhere. You can go away and listen to whatever it is you want to listen to from 18 megs to 1.3 gigs. Backlight duration. I like to have the backlight on a bit longer, so I, I think I'll change that. Menu strings. I, I haven't been involved with any of that. That's more programming. Uh, the mic gain. Roger beep. You can change your Roger beep. I don't use them. Um enable um uh, swd port and he says there if you don't know what swd is you don't need this mod fair enough um custom frequency ranges uh this is the one that everyone's interested in you know 18 megahertz up to 1.3 gig so you know tick that box um the frequency steps now interestingly uh one of the complaints was for the air band you didn't have that frequency step, which was 8330. Um, it made um, the air band a bit more intelligible. Um, NOAA frequencies, well, that's more USA. Uh, I'm not interested in those. Uh, there was a few other things. Um, AM receive on all bands. There you go. You know, uh, handy. If you're going into 27 megahertz, you're in Europe or the USA, and you want to listen to people on AM, um, FM radio frequencies, you know, you can uh, change uh, where the uh, the bands start and stop. Um, air copy frequency, well, that's when you know you're copying radio to radio. LCD contrast, I think it's self-explanatory. So one of the first things I've done is I plugged in my radio, and um, it says here, um, where are we, where are we? It says here... Um, a patch for all radios. Well, I specifically chose K5, K6 and K5 version 8. Okay. So when you're, so, you know, that is the first thing that I did. I selected my radio and it was use stock firmware. And then I checked all the boxes here that I wanted to check. And, you know, I, I bought several of these radios in case I bricked them, but I didn't. I didn't brick anything. So, so the first thing we need to do is you've plugged in your USB. Um, I've got it in COM port 4. Uh, it will be COM port 3, normally by default. And then I've plugged it into a different um, uh, a different USB port. So now it comes up as COM port 4. But don't worry about that as yet. Okay, the first thing we need to do is we need to switch the radio on, but we need it, you know, if you just switch it on, it will just... It will... It will just, you know, switch on. But if we switch it off, but if we hold the push to talk, switch it on, you see your lamp has come on the top. No display, no volume. At this point, plug in your USB cable. Be very careful. Um, now, some people will say, well, can't you plug the cable in first? And then uh, once the cable's plugged in, uh, switch it on um i suppose you could except for me that doesn't work the light doesn't come on okay if the light doesn't come on it's not going to work at least in my instance it didn't so you're all plugged in you're ready to go so now i've uh, downloaded uh, various bin files as i said before um i'll give you an idea Look, let's uh, turn this off again um okay if i switch this on and give you an idea of the font the fonts etc and if we press menu you see the fonts are quite large and there's you know there's the standard amount on this one it's just the standard menus Okay, that you'll all be familiar with if you've just bought the uh, radio, taking it out of the box. These, are, you know, you, these are your menus. So let's go back to the top. Okay, 
And why have I got squelch on zero? Because SSB, um, it just, it, it works for me. Otherwise, normally I'd have the squelch on one. Okay, so, uh, turned it off. Um, we hold in push to talk. We switch it on. The light comes on the top. We've established that. Then, then we plug in our cable. Once again, I'm not saying this is definitive. I'm not saying this is the way to do it. What I'm telling you is this is the way that I do it and it works for me. Okay, let's uh, see if we can get both of these in shot. Okay, yeah, okay, that'll do. That'll do. So, so let's now, okay, so it says there we, we, we've chosen the radio and we, we, we've done our little, little updates here. Um, the way that I did it and, and uh, what I always did was patch firmware and then flash directly. Okay, now... Um, if I do patch firmware, you'll see lots of um, data has come up there. Now, whether you have to patch, do the patch firmware first, I don't know. Once again, as I said before, I did a poke and hope and it worked this way round. So out of habit, I do patch firmware. Then I do flash directly and you can see a window is open there. And it says, uh, you know, it wants to communicate with your radio. Where's me? Where's me mouse pointer gone? And obviously, you select COM4, do connect, and bam. What's happened? That light is now flashing, and you can see there, it's flashing. It's going up. Um, we're just flashing with stock firmware. And I haven't selected anything over there. So it's not actually going to change anything. Okay. If I'd have if I'd have ticked boxes there that I hadn't ticked before, it would update. And as you can see, the radio's come on. And uh well, it's set to 50 megahertz now. Uh that must have been what's that? That's the six meter band, isn't it? Um, I must have been doing something when I was using stock firmware. Anyway. We don't want stock firmware, do we? We want upper sideband and all that old nonsense. So what we do is I've downloaded various bin files that I was messing about with. And the one I want is, is that one. And I think I mentioned that. E.G. Zuma uh, underscore version 0 0.16 underscore pack dot bin. Okay, I've just got that stored in a folder called K5 in my documents. Okay, it's, it's nothing that's standard Windows, uh, standard Windows uh, methodology. Okay, so we don't want stock firmware, so we untick that. Okay, we've unticked it now. It says select own firmware. See, look, stock firm, uh, stock version 26 uh, firmware. But no, what we want is we want a firmware that's going to give us our various um, upper side bands and all that old nonsense. So we do a browse. And of course, um, it will, wherever your default um, windows will be, uh, where, you know, wherever it takes you to, whether it takes you to a desktop or documents or whatever. But anyway, I've got it in documents and I've got it in, um, uh, where are we? Uh, K5. E.G. Zuma. So now, in there, in there, okay, is um, a, the, the one that we want. Now then, what I've got to do is I've got to turn the radio off. Forgot that one. As I said, poke and hope. Okay, we've done it a few times now. We hold push to talk. We switch the radio on. The light comes on. We then plug in the cable. Once again, not definitive. This is how it works for me. Okay. So, so we've selected. 
I, I'm sorry if this video's long drawn out and that I, I'm just doing it on the fly. There's been no forward thinking on this. This is just to get a, um, the uh, radio working for you. So whether it's right or wrong, I do patch firmware and um, it says finish applying mods, etc. But now we do flash directly, flash directly. And as I showed you before, we select the COM port that I want to use. We do connect. We do connect. The LED on top of your radio is flashing. And you can see it's giving you an update of where it is. And hopefully I haven't ballsed it all up. And will be where I was when I was telling people about this just the other day on the Facebook group. And it says it's done. And there we go. So, one of the reasons I know this has worked is if I go into my menus, where are we? I go into my menus, you can see my menus have changed now. Uh, the steps, the steps is fantastic. The steps, if we go into steps, um, we can go from 500 kilohertz steps. Is that in focus? We can go 500 kilohertz and you can go down 250, 125, 150, 30, 25, which is pretty standard. Uh, 15, 12.5 is standard. Uh, 10, um, 8.33, that's for your air band. Uh, 6.25, that's narrow band. 5 kilohertz, 2.5, 1.25, 1 kilohertz, great for SSB, but even better for SSB. Um, 500 hertz, 250 hertz, 100 hertz, 50 hertz, or 1 hertz. You know, you can really fine tune this radio in um, SSB. Let's go, for instance, to 1 kilohertz. Press that, come out of that. And now, if we look at this number up here, you can see right next to it, tiny little tiny little numbers and uh, we're going up there in one kilohertz steps uh, sorry not one kilohertz steps 100 hertz steps so there you go look 379 blah 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 but anyway so there you go and if we look uh, where else let's see if there's other other interesting ah that, that that was it that's the other interesting one I mean, there's lots there. I'll leave you to go through them. Um, wide and narrow band. Uh, where are we? Where are we? The one I'm looking for is D-Mod. If you go into D-Mod and you press D-Mod, we can now, we've got upper side band. We've got AM. We've got FM. Uh, upper side band again. Upper side band is uh, where, where I want to be because I was monitoring uh, the 10 meter band. Yes, for those that are not licensed hams and are not shortwave listeners, but uh, you can go um, <clears throat> uh, zero to seven five five five. There we go. Okay. Um, and of course, if you was in the UK and we've got that oddball uh numbering system if we go in fact let's uh come out of that if we go 27600 oh no that's 276 zero start again 27600 okay we want 601.25 so what we do is we go menu, we go, in fact, look what we could do while we're here. Um, where's D-Mod? There's D-Mod. Let's go to FM. And go up to frequency step. There we go. Step. Let's go in there. All right, if we do that, uh, that, we can now go up to 
27601 and to make it nice and clean uh, we go menu step go down to one so up to so now we've got 276012 and then menu step down one more two more sorry or oh, he could have done one it would have been it would have been okay because it was fives and then one two three four five there we go twenty seven six zero one two five which is channel one of the um twenty seven eighty one uk um fm cb system from nineteen eighty one okay one thing i will add um is i have not done the mod to enable transmit everywhere at the moment this radio my radio will only transmit on two meters 70 centimeters um i've got no real interest at this moment in time in transmitting uh, beyond that you know i've got plenty of radios that do do that i, I wanted this more as a, a, a cheap as you like scanner that you can play about with you can modify you know you can faff around with let's just take that out close that up um yeah you know it yeah, I paid anything between sort of about 12 and about 16 quid. I bought three of them. I've sold two of them on. But, you know, uh, these can be modified to transmit everywhere. Um, they're only got low pass filters for two meters and 70 centimeters. If you mod it for transmit everywhere or you enable transmit everywhere, be very aware the, the power is generally rubbish on most of the um, range, apart from where it's meant to be. And there's no low-pass filtering, so you're going to be probably putting out harmonics here, there, and everywhere. Um, that's down to you. Um, obviously, I can't condone that uh, as a licensed ham, you know, Um what else uh what else can i say yeah of course there won't be band pass filters for the receive side of anything out of band so expect your noise floor to be um uh, higher on you know out of band frequencies on this radio you know the low pass filters the band pass filters for transmit and receive are going to really only be there for what it was designed for so if you've got it on um 27 megahertz you know, um, it's going to be a, a lot noisier. And likewise, on 10 metres receive, you know, I have, uh, on a good day here, I have absolutely zero noise floor on 10 and 12 metres. On a bad day in the afternoon, something somewhere local to me is switched on and my noise floor can go anywhere between sort of 2 and 5 on 10 and 12. It's a quite a recent thing. But on this the noise floor is appreciably higher, about seven or something like that. But, you know, it's to be expected. Well, that's it, really. I think, I think I've think i covered it. I think I've... Um, leave comments. What I'm going to do is I'm going to post this to YouTube. I'm going to um, add a, a description, and uh, then I'm going to post this to the various Facebook groups of... Um, the people that ask me, what did you use? How did you use? When did you use, etc.? Where did you find it? That's the primary um, idea of this. But, you know, if you've got questions, ask me. Uh, don't be surprised if I can't answer. Because, as I say, I found out all of this by doing it. You know, it was just a poke and hope. I picked up the radio. I got the cable. I plugged it into the laptop. I did use the uh, Facebook group. As I said before, I did use the Facebook group. Um, let's go back into Firefox. I did use this um, this group, Quansheng UV-K5 uh, UK users, and that's where I found this this file here, this bin file, which is the one that I've been using. So, you know, join that group, get your files, then use Chrome, uh, go to the website that I'm going to put in the description and Bob's your uncle. And if you brick it, nothing to do with me. 
all right this is done at your own risk so just be aware you know you may brick your radio i think it's very very unlikely but as i say this is just how i did it and it worked for me anyway that's 30 minutes of my life gone i've got to go and pick my wife up now and i love her very much okay then cheers <laughs>